welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast. Before we dive into this episode, I want to share a word from today's sponsor. Have you ever tried a Kind Bar? You might have seen them in your local grocery store, coffee shop, or gym. They make delicious, healthy snacks using whole ingredients you can recognize and pronounce. Well, if you're ready to try some tasty and healthy snacks, we've got a special deal for you. You can try 10 Kind Bars for free. All you have to do is pay shipping. When you order the sample box, you'll also get to try Kind Snack Club, where you'll receive monthly snacks at a discount and get members-only bonuses, such as there are more than the selection you often find at your whole food store or wherever you find Kind Bars. This Snack Club will give you the opportunity to try all the flavors. You shouldn't have to choose between your health and taste when it comes to snacking. And that's why both award-winning chefs and nutritionists love and recommend Kind Bars. I tried their 10 snack sample box. And last week I talked about the black truffle almond and sea salt bar. Um, yum. But since then I've also tried the dark chocolate mocha almond bar. Are you seeing the theme here? (laughs) It was also delicious. And I have been hearing from readers and listeners as well who say, yep, Kind Bar is my choice. For only 200 calories and being gluten-free with low sodium made in the United States, this is a bar that covers so many amazing bases as well as being healthy and something that gets you through the day when you need a little bit of oomph or energy. Well, this is the exciting news. Because you're a listener of The Simple Sophisticate, you can get that box free. Here's the link. Go to kindsnacks.com backslash TSS. That's kindsnacks.com slash TSS. And we thank you for sponsoring the podcast. And remember, when you support our sponsors, you help support this podcast. Welcome to today's episode, episode 171. Before we dive into today's topic, I want to take a moment to thank a listener for leaving a review on iTunes. We really appreciate you taking the time to leave that either four or five star marking, or if you have even more time to leave a review of what you like about the podcast as it lets other potential listeners know what it's all about. So I want to give a shout out and a thank you to Miss T. T. Funny sharing her comment, virtual girls chat. I recently stumbled upon this podcast about a month ago and I am binge listening to them to catch up. Shannon is such a delight to listen to and greatly satisfies my Francophile spirit. Her topics and petite plaisirs are usually always spot on. Can't wait to continue listening. Keep up the excellent work, Shannon. Thank you, Miss T to Funny, for your comment. I really appreciate it. And again, it lets future listeners know what they can expect when they tune in. So if you too are enjoying this podcast, we really appreciate you taking the time to leave a review. On today's episode, we have a special guest. As some of you may know, if you've stopped by my Start Here page on the blog, or you've tuned into previous podcasts, or stopped by and read a post that I wrote way back in 2012 about being an introvert, you know that I can self-describe with being an introvert. And on today's episode, I have the opportunity to have a conversation with an author who just released a new book on this topic. Her name is Jen Graneman, and she's going to talk about the benefits of being an introvert, the science, what really does it mean to be an introvert, and how do we know if we indeed are an introvert? We're going to talk about so many different facets that may not have been something that's out in the forefront um, when it comes to understanding what it means to be an introvert. I thoroughly enjoyed this conversation, and I think you'll find it insightful. She interviewed many, many different introverts, as well as had the opportunity to sit down with researchers in this field. She is also a blogger. You may have visited her blog. It's called Introvert Dear, and it's full of posts about everyday life as an introvert, what it means, how to best navigate and reach your full potential. Well, 
Let's get to the episode. Here is Jen Graneman. Joining me today is a blogger and author, Jen Graneman, who shares her knowledge, observations, and insights about being an introvert as well as highly sensitive. Her new book, The Secret Lies of Introverts Inside Our Hidden World, was just released this past July, and now she's here on The Simple Sophisticate to help us dive in and better understand introversion. Welcome to the podcast, Jen. Hi, Shannon. Thanks for having me on your podcast. I'm really excited to be here. I am thrilled to have you on as a self-described introvert myself. I know there are many listeners as well who describe themselves as introverts. I want to begin right off the bat, though, with the science of it, um, because it's a term we hear sometimes used loosely in society, but it is scientific. Um, there is scientific base, basis to it. So could you describe the difference between introverts and extroverts when it comes to the science? Yeah, absolutely. And this is something I cover in depth in my book. So first, let's, maybe let's just talk about what an introvert is. An introvert is someone who prefers quiet, low-key environments. They often enjoy spending time alone, and solitude recharges them. Socializing can drain them. And there's actually a scientific reason for that. Introverts and extroverts are wired differently. Introverts respond to rewards differently. And rewards are not necessarily like gold stars or trophies or things like that. <laughs> Although I guess that would be a form of reward. Uh, but rewards uh, in psychological terms are things like money, social status, social, social affiliation, food, and even sex and relationships. So if you get promoted at work or convince an attractive stranger to give you his or her phone number, you're gaining an, uh, a reward. That's a reward. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, of course, introverts care about things like earning money, eating, having relationships, and But the experts I spoke with when researching my book hypothesized that introverts respond differently to rewards than extroverts. So compared, yeah, compared to extroverts, introverts are just less motivated by and energized by the possibilities for rewards around them. So while extroverts, uh, you know, may may typically talk a lot, uh, are more driven, uh, appear really enthusiastic, and are really ready to just get out there and socialize. It's different for introverts. Is it, is it kind of that whole concept of extra beyond themselves, so external rewards, and then we find the rewards more internally? Is that what it is? Yeah, absolutely. So I interviewed hundreds of introverts for my book. And, you know, of course, they said, well, I feel rewarded in other ways. And they tended to name things like activities that would turn them inward like reading a book or expressing themselves through art or even something simple like a walk by themselves or shopping in a quiet mall by themselves. And again, that comes down to the difference between extroverts and introverts. Introverts just aren't as uh, driven to chase those things that extroverts chase. Interesting. I, and I can completely agree with that. we is it that we don't need the applause from the ex- that we give ourselves that self approval, or is it have anything to do with approval? It, it's just is it? Is, I think I remember reading your book about the dopamine high. We get it. Is that what's coursing through our veins when we have that time alone versus the external um, stimuli that the extrovert needs? Yeah, that's a great question. It does have something to do with dopamine. Dopamine is a chemical found in the brain. It's a neurotransmitter, and it helps control the brain's pleasure and reward centers. It also enables us to notice rewards and take, take action to move toward them, and it reduces our cost of effort, meaning it increases how much a person is willing to work for the possible reward. And for extroverts, that reward system, that dopamine reward system, is very, very active. Uh, but for introverts, it's less so. So we just simply don't need as much stimulation and as many dopamine hits, you could say, in very simple terms, <laughs> as extroverts yeah. do. That makes sense. And there was a study that you shared in your book, and I believe you had the opportunity to talk with this doctor, Dr. Nancy Snydman. And I can remember this study when it was revealed a couple of years ago. And I remember reading it. It was with regards to um, validating there is a difference and it's nature, not nurture. We are born more introverted or more extroverted. I remember reading this study, and I'll let you talk about it more in detail here in a second, and just feeling validated, just saying, oh, my God, 
I am. That is me. And I'm not like everyone else necessarily, but it's not because I'm weird or that I'm less less than. Can you kind of explain what that study was? What did she find when it came to, because I believe she's doing babies. So they didn't have any influence from the societal world yet. How were they different and how did it demonstrate that indeed it's nature, not nurture with regards to our temperament? Yeah, absolutely. And before I jump into that, let me just say it felt absolutely validating to me to to do this research and to learn about introversion. I've been studying introversion for uh, many years and the whole process was very healing for me. So, yes, uh, I spoke with Nancy Snydman. She's a research professor at the Child Development uni- uh, Unit at the University of Massachusetts. And she has done a lot of studies with babies. And what they found was basically the temperament that you're born with is something that will follow you throughout your life. You're not suddenly going to become an extrovert one day. <laughs> if you were born an introvert, you'll likely stay an introvert. And that can feel validating on the one hand, like, oh, wow, that's okay. This is me and this is who I'm always going to be. Um, some people have said to me they, they felt like they were doomed, like, I'm always going to be this way. But I think to those people who feel like, oh, this is dooming to me, what I want to remind them is that your personality can change. Uh, research has shown that although temperament stays the same, personality flexes and changes throughout life. And generally, our personality changes for the better. So... If you're someone, for example, who gets really nervous or uncomfortable talking to strangers and starting conversations with them, well, with some practice, with developing social skills, and with just feeling a little more comfortable in your own skin, that's a skill that you can develop. And that's a personality change. So so you might always stay an introvert. You might always need time to yourself. You might always prefer low-key environments. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's great but your personality can flex and you can develop those skills that you would like to have. And you shared with regards to those changes, just making sure that those changes to adapt to maybe it's your work environment or the the social environment you want to be in, but it's maybe more difficult. It just to do it with small steps, little practices, don't maybe dive in entirely. You may overwhelm yourself. Is that, what is some other advice that you would share with someone? Okay. So how do I become more comfortable? Say, it's the small steps, though, I think that's powerful, at least for me, um, to get more comfortable being and talking to strangers or it, it, what would you suggest? Yeah, I, I totally agree with you about small steps. So one of the introverts I interviewed, his name is Andre, and he was someone who, you know, self-described is was kind of nerdy and awkward. He just didn't really know how to start conversations with people or you know, kind of interact well with people in general. So he actually set out to change this about himself. And again, this would be a personality change, not a temperament change. Uh, I can attest that he is very much an introvert and likes his alone time. (laughs) And it's probably never going to go away. (laughs) But he made a plan to talk to five people. I believe it was every day. Uh, And these could just be small conversations. So, for example, he was in an art museum, and he decided to ask a woman nearby him what she thought of this painting. And then the next day, he was in a restaurant and saw someone reading a book, and so he asked them what they thought of this book. And, you know, he he will admit that these were kind of awkward interactions, and they were not very substantial. Uh, It was kind of like, what do you think about this? Oh, that's great. Okay, bye. (laughs) Um, In his own words, he he ran away. He shouted the question across the room and then ran away, which, you know, that's great. It's a great start. Yeah, I was going to say it's a start. And um, from there, it would become more comfortable instead of diving into the whole hour-long conversation with a, not necessarily a stranger, but someone you may not know that well. So that's uh, a good good way to start it. You should You've shared a few um, characteristics of an introvert. Can you share a few more? Maybe there's someone out there who they're hearing this and like, oh, that kind of sounds like me. What are some other descriptors of someone who may identify with being an introvert? So introverts, like I said, enjoy spending time alone. We feel recharged in solitude, socializing and busy environments. And even too many things packed into our schedule can drain us. 
And again, it's not because we dislike people. It's just we need those calm moments, that downtime to feel at our best. Introverts tend to think before they speak, and they often do their best work alone. They're not the people who are clamoring to do a group project or have a brainstorming <laughs> session or uh, you know, do collaborative learning or whatever. We want to go into our office or our bedroom and close the door or maybe just even go to a coffee shop and put our headphones on and tune out the world. And we want to focus on the task at hand and do it by ourselves. They also prefer quality over quantity when it comes to relationships. And when I say that, I'm not saying extroverts are shallow and introverts are deep. I'm just saying that introverts would prefer a few good relationships to a dozen surface a level ones or, or, yeah, acquaintances. Thank you. So introverts often have smaller social circles and they prefer it that way. Um, you also talk about in the book, the spectrum. And I think that's important to keep in mind because I can sit here and say, well, for me as an introvert, this is what you know I like to do. But I may talk, and I've done this before, had a conversation with someone else who's introvert, and I'm thinking, but we're different. What is the spectrum when it comes to introversion and extroversion? Can you explain that a little bit? Right. There are a lot of differences between introverts. We are definitely not all the same. And a lot of those differences come down to that spectrum. Introversion and extroversion are not all or nothing traits. In fact, Carl Jung said there's no such thing as a pure introvert or a pure extrovert. That person would be in the lunatic. Asylum. I love that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love that one. <laughs> right. So, you know, you, we, we, we take these labels and, and we say, yes, I'm an introvert or yes, I'm, a, I'm an extrovert. But in reality, we all fall somewhere along this spectrum. So someone who's very introverted might fall on the very far end of the spectrum on the introverted end where someone who's very extroverted and we can probably all think of someone like that falls on the very far extroverted end most people fall closer to the middle so they lean towards introversion or they lean towards extroversion but they can act introverted at times and extroverted at others okay and that's i think that's important to point out because we may, we may know someone who's very extroverted, but then they have a tendency to need some time alone. We think, wait a second, that's c- totally contradictory. But no, that's actually healthy. People do have a different balance or, or, or of both qualities, some just more than others. Yeah, absolutely. I, there, and speaking of that extroversion, introversion, there was an interesting um, point that you made in your book about how even extroverts do get drained a little bit when they're in social environments. But You go on to say, because introverts do when they're around a lot of people and there's a lot of energy, but you say there's an important difference after the effect with regards to being in social environments where we both may have lost some energy, but the introvert, something else happens. I believe you called it the introvert hangover. Is that correct? (laughs) Yes. Yes. (laughs) Can you explain what the introvert hangover is? How we can identify it and maybe, I don't know if we can entirely avoid it, but maybe kind of lessen it, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. So actually that study that you're referencing talks about introverts and extroverts both feeling fatigued about three hours after socializing. So yes, it's true. Introverts get drained by socializing, but everyone does, really. And it's probably because socializing is work. You have to talk, you have to process, you have to listen, you have to pay attention to body language. There's a lot going on when you're socializing, so it makes sense that everyone gets fatigued by socializing. But nevertheless, there are some very real differences between introverts and extroverts. Introverts tend to get more fatigued than extroverts, and they really do prefer downtime more than extroverts do. So the introvert hangover, probably (laughs) one of my favorite phrases (laughs) in one of the most fun chapters to write. I appreciate it because even before I I mean, I heard that term because you mentioned it earlier in the book and you say, I'll get to it later. And I'm thinking, oh, I think I know what she's talking about. And granted, I I could just, I can remember some instances after you've just shared, you know, you had a party, whatnot, where you'll go into it here in a second where I'm like, that's a great label for it because it's exactly what it's kind of like. So go for it. Tell us what it is. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, it's also been called a social hangover or a social burnout. One of my writers of Introvert Deer wrote an article about the introvert hangover and the term just kind of stuck. So an introvert hangover is when you feel physically unwell from overextending yourself socially. And this looks different for everyone, but some people have said they get headaches, they get nauseous, they feel dizzy, 
And of course, they just feel fatigued because they're drained. And it could happen an hour into socializing. Some introverts told me it happened the next day. So you're out at a party, you're staying up late, whatever, you're talking to people, and then the next day you feel just really crummy. So I like to say that the only cure for an introvert hangover is the same cure for an actual hangover induced by alcohol. Okay. Which is, <laughs> which is you just need time. You need time to recover from that. And for introverts, that looks like having downtime or time alone and time when they can turn inward and recharge. Well, it's so funny because I find some of the sweetest days, say it's a weekend and on Friday night or Saturday night, um, maybe gone out and had a nice dinner or been with friends or, or a dinner party, I look forward to the day after almost as much as I look forward to the gathering because I, especially if I know I've carved out a day to be by myself or to be with, you know, not a lot of people, because I know how powerful that is to recharge. It feels amazing. But when I don't get it, oh my gosh, I get, I get agitated. I'm like, okay, I need, I need, <laughs> I need time. So I, yeah, that's a the cure is time to recharge on your own. Yeah, and I think for introverts it tends to compound. So we can stretch ourselves and maybe overextend a little bit on one day and, and manage to get through the next day okay. But if it's a series of overextending ourselves, like we have several social events back to back, or maybe our lives are just oriented around being uh, constantly overextended, then that really gets to be hard for introverts. It gets hard for me. I appreciate you guys labeling it. I think that that term is very powerful in the sense of it's not what we want to feel, basically. We don't want to feel that way. Um, but yeah, so let's. I, that's the thing, though. There's a lot of benefits of being an introvert. I think this is something that's uh, so important to point out. Well, celebrate this. Um, you know, don't feel doomed. There are so many things that you can do that come more naturally. What are some benefits of being an introvert? Yeah, I absolutely think we should celebrate it. It's not a disorder. It's not a disease. It's not a broken way of being. For many years, I grew up thinking there was something wrong with me because I was a quiet person and because I often like spending time alone. I had friends, but I could only be with them for so long. And when they kept going, when they were like, all right, let's go do the next thing or let's hang out again, I was just like, Oh, like, how are they doing this? You know, like, are they, are they <laughs> pretending or is there really a difference? I really appreciate you sharing your, your childhood experience with your friends. That was very powerful for me as a reader because you had your circle, but I really, you just shared what part of the, what you shared in the book. It was this, how are you doing this? Why, why can't, do you sincerely like doing that? Cause right. I don't <laughs> right. 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 Oh, I thought that was very honest. Thank you. Thank you for sharing yeah, that. And I don't know that it, everybody would react the way I did, but I put it back on myself and thought, well, well why am I different? What's, is there something wrong with me? Uh, so it was really empowering to learn about introversion because it really helped me understand myself. So yes, absolutely, there are things we should celebrate about introverts. And one of those things is introverts are able to focus for long periods of time and really do quality work. So introverts are the ones who are sitting at their desks or at their computers, and they don't need someone else to motivate them. Often when they're interested in something, they'll dive right in. They're zoned in. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they, they get in the zone. I certainly do. And many introverts told me that was true for them, too, when they were engaging in an activity that was really important to them. So they can dive deep. They can shut out distractions. And I think good quality work happens when you're able to really focus in. There's a handful of jobs that you shared that um, are good fits for introverts. And one for you and me, our blogging and our writing. Um, what are a few other careers that if, you know, just whether we're trying to figure out our career move or maybe we're considering jumping, what are a few others that tend to be the strengths of an introverted person? I actually talked to introverts about this, and I surveyed hundreds of them and tried to see if there were certain careers that introverts were naturally drawn to. Uh, you might think, oh, yeah, introverts are librarians, or they drive trucks, or they're all writers, or something like that. <laughs> but that turned out not to be true at all. In fact, there were introverts who did those typical introverted jobs, and then there were introverts who did 
what I like to say, people-oriented jobs. So they were teachers or counselors or they worked in sales. And I also asked introverts about how satisfied they were with these jobs. And, of course, it ranged uh, all across the board. Uh, surprisingly, the introverted librarian was not very happy with her job because she said she really? had to share an office with someone. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. And, and then many introverted teachers and therapists told me they felt really fulfilled doing what they were doing. So I, I think there is a couple key ingredients that introverts should look for in a job. Yeah, what would those be? I think the first thing is your job needs to give you some amount of downtime. You need to be able to close your door, or if you don't have a door to close, to at least be able to step away from interacting with the public for at least a little bit during your day. If you have a public-facing role where you're literally interacting with people almost all day, it's going to get very draining for you. And then the other thing is introverts can do people-oriented jobs, but what tends to be best for us is people-oriented jobs that allow us to interact meaningfully with people. Oh. So the teachers, the therapists, the uh, consultants, those were the ones who felt satisfied with their jobs. People who worked in call centers or customer service roles where they're answering calls about billing questions or dealing with angry customers, they were interacting with people, but it wasn't in a meaningful way. It wasn't fulfilling. Okay. Yeah. So those were the introverts who weren't very satisfied with their jobs. That is, so it's, it's the, what makes up the job. So it's the behind the, not the behind the scenes, but look beyond the label of the job and, and see what is that person going to be able to do? What kind of flex time do they, are they going to be able to have shut the door? As you mentioned, thank you for sharing that because I think there is some misunderstandings about some jobs and I, you pointed that out beautifully. So thank you. Oh yeah. I want to talk briefly about your blog because that's where it all began for you. And in 2013, you began introvert dear and i regularly have been reading posts and i can relate i can see that similar experiences and fully understand i'm sitting there going oh yep and the most recent one that i saw and i want to just share this was the text me don't call me i'm like oh yeah <laughs> that's definitely <laughs> that makes so yes. much sense um but there's one um that caught my eye and it actually overlaps with something you discuss in the books with regards to introverts and work. And since we're talking about work, I want to talk about this question. Um, it was actually one of your um, readers or an individual that you interviewed. Her name's Kia, I believe. And she was very, she, she works diligently. She's very quiet, but that was just the thing. Her coworkers didn't understand that. They thought something was wrong with her and they, and that frustrated her. And so my question is, and I, I want to share this quote really quickly. You wrote, this really frustrates Kia because like many introverts, she's at work to, well, work, not make friends. <laughs> and I just, what, what is the best way for an introvert to function at work? You shared a few things there, but with that one, especially, you know, people do, they feel like they're being friendly. They're saying, come join us. What's the middle ground there? Or how do, should introverts interact well at work, but still feel they have their time? Yeah, it can be tough for introverts at work because like I said, we tend to go in go into work and just work. We go right for our desks or our offices and put our heads down and start checking our email or doing whatever else it is we need to do. We don't come to work with the mindset that some others do, which is, oh, I'm here to chat and build relationships and make friends. Work is generally work to us. So it can be tough. I've worked several jobs that placed me in an extroverted role. I worked in marketing, I was a teacher, I was a journalist for a while. And at a, at a point in the day, I would get drained. And I found that one thing that helped was going and taking a quick walk if I could. I know not every job allows people to do that, but if you're in a position where you can, just a short walk by yourself can help combat that feeling of being drained or taking your lunch break on your own which can be tricky because coworkers often say, well, hey, come, come with us. We're going to lunch. <laughs> and you feel like a jerk if you say no. I know they mean they well. Know. They want to include yeah. you. And I appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate I that too. And, you know, it does go a long way towards building relationships at work to do things like that. So I think it's about striking a balance. It's about saying, sure, I'll go with you today. Um, but tomorrow then I'm eating in my car or at my desk or by myself yeah. or however uh, it is that you recharge. 
and I'm really okay with it. I'm not lonely. Exactly. I need that time. Yeah. yeah. And, and maybe they just have never heard that from right. someone. And so, and we're educating people by saying that in a, in a very loving kind exactly. of way. Exactly. Yeah. Introverts tend to keep all those thoughts to themselves. And so sometimes just saying it, saying, well, I'm an introvert and I really just need a little time to myself. And that can go a long way. Yeah. I think that's a good part of it. And that's hard sometimes because until we know what it is or why it is that way, it's hard to put our thoughts and then our words in and express that. But your book has done that. And that's what I really appreciate about it. It is a wealth of resource. I sat down and I read it over the uh, one weekend, so two days. And um, I found myself as I was prepping for the interview going, it was just so much and I need to reread it again just to soak it up because there's just so much information and helpful information. I'm like, oh, that's so true. And oh, that... It's just a wealth of a resource. Bravo and congratulations. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so glad to hear that. I really appreciate it. I um, I want to talk really quickly. We talked a little bit about it, but solitude. This is something that is hard for some people to understand because it is absolutely necessary for introverts to have their time alone. And ha- did you find or have you found in your studies, do most introverts need quite a bit or people that identify being an introvert Or is it a big window of how much time people need? You know, it really varies. I did a study where I asked introverts how much time alone they needed. And for some, it was an hour a week. For others, it was many hours a week. And then some others said, well, I feel like I'm getting too much time alone right now with where I'm at in my life. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so, so it really varies. I think the bottom line is it's important to get that time, whether it's 30 minutes to yourself closing the door of your bedroom, having some quiet time, or just spending the night, uh, the, the, the weekend night at home by yourself. Um, I actually live with another introvert. And <laughs> oh, okay, perfect. That's helpful. It, well, it is. We, um, oh. <laughs> we're, we're very happy. Or maybe not. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's great. Um, my boyfriend, <laughs> we're, you know, we, we live uh, together, and we definitely appreciate each other. But one thing we found is that we're both home all the time. Because we're introverts. And so, oh, so you need more space. Yeah, and, and we both actually work from home, too. Oh, okay. So we've had to make an agreement that you're going to go out on this day so that I can have the apartment to myself, and I'll go out on this day. Um, he has a gaming group that he goes to often, and I have a friend that I go see for happy hour uh, just to chat. And that's kind of a lifesaver in our week, too, because it's like, ah, oh, okay, Tonight is my night. <laughs> I can watch Netflix. I can do whatever I want. Oh, that's wonderful. You guys are aware of that and you're communicating and you've found that balance. That, that's, that's, that's huge. Yeah, absolutely. So I think it's important for introverts to speak up and say they need that alone time, whether you're with extroverted friends or, uh, you know, whoever you're with. It, it's important to speak up and say it because, you know, in the, I, I hit a point in my relationship where both of us had to speak up and say, okay, we really need <laughs> to have some time to ourselves. You would think it would have just been natural, but even then, amongst two introverts, or say between two introverts, we had to speak up and say it. That's wonderful. No, yeah, you needed to say it. And uh, that's, no, I appreciate you sharing that experience too, because even amongst introverts, um, we, yeah, we assume people understand or know. And I think that's the part of it, that introverts as well, you need to understand is extroverts don't need that. So they're not going to understand it until you do say something. That's the huge part. Yeah. Um, I want to, I want to wrap up with the final, final question that I always ask my, my guests. We do a petite plaisir at the end of each episode, just a simple pleasure that you enjoy. What is one that you enjoy any time during your day and just in an everyday routine? Yes, I am ready for this question. (laughs) So it's not a recipe. It's not a treat. But mine is, it might sound silly, but white Christmas lights hung in my apartment. I live in this building that is very industrial. It was an old factory that's been turned into artist lofts. And I have uh, an apartment here. And it's got pipes running through the living room it's got a stone pillar in the bedroom it has concrete floors it's got a very unique look and i like it a lot i wrapped white christmas lights around the pipe in the living room and then white christmas lights around the headboard in the bedroom i love it i love to just go into the bedroom especially turn off all the other lights plug in the christmas lights 
I have a diffuser, I put on a nice scent, and then I just read in my bed. And I try to do that every single day. It really feels good to me. That's your moment. That's your, that's your you time. That's your me time. Yeah. It sounds like it's a great ambiance that it creates with regards to light. Lighting's powerful. Lighting is very powerful. Thank you for sharing that. That's a creative and simple idea to do. There's a couple quotes I want to end our conversation with. You wrote that one of the primary intentions of your book is to help us introverts finally feel understood. And you also share, and I nodded my head immediately in agreement when I read this, when the majority of the population leans towards being extroverted, as as studies have shown, and such behavior is applauded more readily in society, being an extrovert, what our hearts, introverts' hearts, long for is just one person to see the real us and to know what's really going on inside our heads, which is why while this book will be appreciated by those who identify with being an introvert, I think this book would be worthwhile for those to read who love an introvert, but maybe don't understand our temperament and how it works. So thank you for writing it. Oh, thank you so much. That's really kind of you. And I do hope extroverts will pick up the book and I hope it will help them understand their introverted friends and spouses and coworkers better. I think it will definitely be a resource that people will look to and then return to. That's what, the, that's what a good book's about. Is that, oh, okay, this is a resource I can keep. Oh, thank you so much. I, yeah, sometimes we just have we just don't have the knowledge, and until we do, that's like ah, got it, <laughs> light bulb moment, you know? Yes, I certainly had that light bulb moment a few years ago when I learned about introversion, and I like to say that ever since then I've been on a mission to let introverts everywhere know it's okay to be who they are. That's that's what it's all about is just embracing who you are. I think that's very important. And while you're doing a wonderful job. And I believe that book, and I'm going to put a link to this book. You mentioned it, and I looked it up too, and I want to read it now that you've mentioned it. It's called The Introvert Advantage. Yes, please do. That's a great book. I'll definitely put a link on the show notes if people are inter- interested in that as well. Listeners, Jen Graneman's book, The Secret Lives of Introverts, Inside Our Hidden World, is now available. And you can visit her blog, Introvert Dear, to discover even more insightful and inspiring writing about the topics of introversion and being highly sensitive. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. As I mentioned in this conversation, it is a wealth of a resource of a book. It is full of all sorts of specific details and characteristics and tips and ideas. We barely scratched the surface. It felt like we talked about a lot, but I barely scratched the surface. And it really is a book, not just for introverts, but for those who work with introverts, who maybe are raising a a child who has um, introversion tendencies. I, I I would love to give this to people who, hey, I, it's hard for me to explain exactly what my, my temperament is, but maybe if, if you have time, read excerpts of this book. It'll be, it would be very helpful for them. Um, and to find the link to this book and to everything else we talked about in our conversation, visit today's show notes, the simplyluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast 171. You'll find everything that we talked about as well. I include a few posts and episodes from my archives that deal with being an introvert um, just in general in our everyday lives, but also in the workplace that you may enjoy. Thank you for listening. And I'd like to thank Jen for taking the time to stop by introvert to introvert and letting us know. Let's embrace who we are each and every one of us, extroverts, introverts, because we all need each other to thrive in this world. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticated Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, stop by the blog, the Simply Luxurious Life. Dot com or pick up the book now available on audible itunes and amazon as well as in paperback choosing the simply luxurious life a modern woman's guide to stay caught up on the most recent episodes of the podcast blog post and to receive exclusive news as well as an extra dose of inspiration to start your weekend subscribe to the simply luxurious life's weekly newsletter which arrives in your inbox each friday morning to enjoy the hot cup of tea or a hot cup of coffee. Thank you for listening. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. A la prochaine.